Kathy, you know, it's interesting. If he's struggling to find something to do with his cash pile, I don't know why he would want to make it even larger. Um, he has, I think, more cash on hand than any company ever has in the history of the world. Why is he selling his Apple stake now? Well, I mean, I think the Apple, um, the selling of the Apple steak actually made sense. It was becoming, you know, if you sort of look at Berkshire as having sort of several buckets, if you will, and they've got this equity portfolio that they actively manage. Apple was becoming really an outsized percentage of that portfolio, and it was becoming highly concentrated around Apple. So the fact that they sold those Apple shares actually made sense, and it sort of brought, you know, it was, it was some portfolio rebalancing. But to your point, the combination of some decent cash flow generation coupled with proceeds from the sale of, of some of these stocks um, has led um, Berkshire to have a record cash pile and really not have a lot of good ways to use it. At least that is what the third quarter results appeared um, appeared to show. Yeah, so they have now, I don't know, something over $325 billion. I mean, just a monstrous amount of cash on hand and nothing to do with it, Kathy. What should Warren Buffett be doing with all that money? Well, they're saying it's interesting because, you know, they don't pay a dividend. And one of the things in the quarter that I think investors are probably not going to be too happy about is the fact that they didn't even buy back their own stock this quarter. Um, I think investors would like to see them make a, a significant acquisition. Um, realistically, they're not going to deploy all that cash. Mm -hmm. They're an insurance company. They need to keep some liquidity to pay claims. So, But even so, they could easily allocate $100 billion to acquisitions. The problem and the frustration yeah. at Berkshire, I believe, is that the M&A market has changed significantly sure. over the last, let's just say, 20 years. Um, Berkshire's now competing with private equity firms who employ a different model, um, you know, can pay higher multiples for targets because they employ a degree of leverage. Right. And so Berkshire has really kind of struggled to find sizable deals. Especially with valuations getting to where they are as well. So, Kathy, I look at the insurance uh, business, the underwriting earnings declined, dragged down by catastrophe losses. How much does climate change and extreme weather factor into Berkshire? Berkshire's reliance on insurance. I mean, is this something that it needs to perhaps rethink? And very quickly here. Um, well, it's an interesting point. And, you know, the insurance industry has had almost five years now of what's so-called a hard market, where the insurance industry has had pricing power. And this is my primary area of coverage. And it's actually that pricing strength that prompted me to have to put initially put a buy recommendation on Berkshire. I think their core insurance businesses are attractive franchises and I'm particularly encouraged by um, some of the progress being made at Geico. But mm -hmm. to your point, climate change is definitely an issue. Um, the insurance industry will leverage climate change into pricing strength, however. So as unfortunate a dynamic as climate change is, mm -hmm. and it is a challenge for the insurance industry, they have, um, it has enabled them to get some pretty significant pricing power. Having said that, yeah. I thought Berkshire's results this quarter in their reinsurance and their commercial lines business were a little mediocre, um, given what's going on in the broader marketplace.